I'm here at this epic construction site of the future in the Siksika Nation, about an hour west of Calgary in Canada. And they're already printed the first four unit multifamily complex. They're working on the second now in that tent. In the orange structure, they have the mixing station. We're gonna go check out all of that, interview some of their team at Nidus 3D and more. My name is Jared Gross, your host at Automate Construction and I've been traveling the world to all the different 3D printed construction projects and construction automation projects I can find to bring you the future of construction. Here in Canada, they're dealing with frigid temperatures, so that tent not only protects them from the wind, the dust and potential debris, but also keeps the concrete warm enough so that it doesn't freeze. Many people understand that concrete is a reaction that happens between the cement and the water and if the water's frozen that's just not going to work out so they're dealing with the elements and we're going to see how that goes the mixing station is one of the most important parts of the job even though it doesn't look pretty this hose has all of the concrete running through it and so avoiding a clog making sure the material is flowing properly is critical and all that happens in that orange tent so that it can be done in a controlled environment it's great having this dusty process separate from the tent where the construction is happening. It keeps the air quality in there much higher. This was the first four unit building they printed here at the Seeksika Nation. Nidus also printed one more in Ontario, Canada, also four units. They're printing the exact same floor plan now under the tent and it's going much faster because they have all the experience. They're hoping to complete that project within about five days of printing. Yesterday they did 20 layers, today they're going for 25, so we should see some great progress. And this one, they're completing all of the roofing and the windows, electrical, plumbing. It's making a ton of progress and it should be a very strong building for this structure, which in the past has received some flood damage. So these buildings should be more resilient in those conditions. Remember, this is a four unit project. So it's loaded with electrical, mechanical and plumbing for four families. They've got the PEX, all of the outlets going under the slab below the frost line, because here in Canada, the things will freeze over during the winter if they don't put everything underneath the frost line all the way to the well. So they take all of these precautions along with a bunch of other insulation. Uh, they'll do the interior walls with steel frame construction, making a really strong building. Yesterday, the electricians were here installing some of the outlets. They'll come back when they reach the switch level and then again, if they probably the lights for the top level. There's typically three levels of electricity in a building. Uh, this one being four units is no different. So we're gonna get to see the next few days of construction over Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they should reach full height and then begin the completion. The house uh, to the right of this was completed last week and they've already made a ton of progress. Plumbing and electric just go right in the wall. By handling these things while the concrete is still wet and malleable, they can place it in and then pack in some extra wet concrete to compensate for any holes or adjustments, they get a perfect placement. If they forget, they can cut into this concrete later on, but it's such a nice advantage to be able to put these things in uh, without having to bring out any serious tools. Hi everyone, Ian here at Nidus 3D. Welcome to our new job site. We're currently mobilized just outside of Calgary, Alberta uh, with the Siska First Nation. This is a huge job for us. It's the first time that we've done the same building several times over, which is sort of the promise of this technology, this iterative process where we can learn from some of the challenges on the first building and carry those lessons forward, improve what we're doing and deploy it again. And, and we've been really successful doing that here. Uh, so if you wanna follow me, I'll, I'll show you a little bit about what we're doing here. So here we have the printer extruding behind us. Uh, this is only day three of printing. We've been able to achieve a tremendous amount of height since we started this project here. This is the second building and I'll take you across and show you uh, the first building in a little while. What we have here is our new wall type that we're using. Uh, we, we're trying to build to the new international standards that just came out, or we are building to the new international standards that came out, which is really exciting. At this job site, one of the interesting things that's kind of changed since the last time we were on Jared's podcast is that we're actually printing inside. One of the big challenges up here in Canada is we get a lot of cold weather, and particularly in Alberta, it gets even colder. And you can tell if you look around that we're actually inside a tent. 
It's warmish outside, but certainly not printable weather if we were just doing this outside out of a tent. It certainly led to some challenges on the front end. Uh, we have a very limited space at the top of the printer between the top of the printer and the top of the tent. Uh, so we had to figure out some interesting things around host management and uh, how we're deploying the technology in terms of our mixing and batching system outside and how it's pumping into this tent. Uh, and we'll take you outside and show you that setup in a minute. We've spent a lot of our time this year focusing on the mix design that we have, improving the mix design that we have, uh, working on some new ad mixtures that we can bring in to hopefully and, and potentially lower the embodied carbon in our mix. That's not happening behind me right now, but we're going to have some really exciting announcements about that in, in the coming months. So this is our control panel. This is where we control the pump from in here. It's the local station. Um, they can also control it from in there, how much concrete they want, how fast they want it. Um, comes straight down from our batch plant into this hopper here, from up there in the mixer. And uh, yeah, basically just straight shot right to the printer head and they take care of the rest. My name's Paige. I am one of the batch plant operators here at Nidus 3D. Um, right here is where we make all the magic happen. So right now, we are just batching a batch right now. So silo one is my sand, silo two is our aggregate. We use six to eight mil. Um, we have our cement, but all of this does it automatically. Um, but unless something happens like the tolerance or I get a dosing error, then I can add everything manually. So if I need a little extra sand, I can put it in here, from here, boom, boom. If I need some extra aggregate, I can do it from silo two, same with the cement and same with water. Hello, I'm Ryan Hall. I'm the housing manager with Six Sigma Nation. And uh, behind me is the first building for our project, which is called uh, the Blackfoot name Kakatusoyists, which means star lodges. So this project started about a year ago um, with a collaboration with the University of Calgary School of Architecture and uh, had students work on some ideas for our housing out here uh, at Six Sigma Nation. Uh, these are one bedroom, one bath, four plexes to deal with acute emergency housing needs and transitional housing. And so we're just really pleased with the project. It's uh, gonna deliver housing for a lot of people with a high housing need. Andre Farrell, uh, my role here is uh, machine operator, AKA travel master, all right? And uh, yeah, so while you can see we're cooking here pretty good. Uh, this is uh, start of day three. And, um, you know, we've been fighting some of the challenges. Uh, every day is a new one. However, uh, with determination and perseverance and with the right attitude, we're going to kill this thing. Hey, my name is Dylan Murray, uh, working here on contract for Netis 3D. Happy to be a part of the project. I've uh, been in concrete for 20 years in its classic form, classic form work, classic walls. Really happy to be on board here, checking out the 3D space. Uh, it's certainly the future of our industry. Um, I think people that don't agree with that uh, you know, might say, you know, it might not be tomorrow, might not be in 10 years, but certainly automation and construction is the future and it's nice to be a part of what's going to be the future of the concrete industry. So I'm Nick Drigicevic. Uh, I am the project manager here at Nidus 3D. Uh, we're currently in the middle of uh, printing building two of four at Six Sika Nation. Today is day three of uh, printing building number two and Yesterday, we set a uh, company record of 20 layers. We are printing about 2,500 square foot base here. So what we've tried to do here, because it's such a massive project, is have all of our subcontractors basically following us in an assembly line. And so far, it's working out well. Uh, winter is coming. The negative days are coming. So uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to muster through and get as much done as we possibly can. Uh, my name is Gustavo. I'm a robotics engineer at Nidus 3D. I'm um, in charge of running the printer. So right now what went wrong is the, the material level on the hopper was a little bit low and we had some connection issues with the Wi-Fi router because there's a lot of concrete and the printer itself is blocking it. So uh, what, I, what I did, I lost connection to the printer so I couldn't actually fix the hopper level that was happening. So what I did was just, I literally just went closer to the router, got connection and I just figured out that being a little bit higher on the Skyjack kind of helps it. So it might be the way, just going higher with the print. And you control all that from the tablet there? Yeah, all from here. I have uh, two software that I use uh, that I control during the print and another one that 
kind of uh, configures the printer for a hopper level for the alignment. And yeah, it's all from here. It's day four of the Nidus 3D print. They're gonna print this 2,200 square foot complex in just five days. Today they're getting up to lentil height. It's about an 18 or a 16 layer day. They're on layer nine out of 16 right now. And they should finish out the day by getting to that top of the window height where they'll put the steel lentils over the top. And then tomorrow they'll print all the way right on top of those steel lentils to complete out the top wall of the building. Nidus is using this squiggly interior infill, which can be partially filled with insulation and also receive vertical columns that have rebar tied into the slab at the bottom so that you have traditional columns that engineers are used to to support the vertical load of the roof, holding it down in any type of wind conditions they'll be receiving. This printer has a U-axis, so it's able to rotate, giving you that nice rounded edge on the square extrusion. It also has a start-stop function and flaps giving you even edges on the sides. Hi, my name is uh, Ted Urbanchik. I'm one of the uh, founders and owners of Nidus 3D Limited. Uh, we do, of course, 3D printing and concrete, one of the few in the world that are achieving uh, great goals and opportunities to print uh, 3D homes and residential uh, properties. We've spent a lot of time and put a lot of effort into the material side. And, you know, the printer is one thing, and the functionality of the printer and how it operates. Uh, but really it comes down to the material side, coming up with the right mix to uh, be able to reduce the effects of, of cracking, to make sure you have smooth uh, flow of material out, make sure you have good placement. And um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's actually been the biggest part of our focus. Day five and they got maybe six inches of snow last night, but I believe they're still printing. It's snowing right now below freezing. Let's take a look inside and see if they're gonna actually finish this big four unit print in just five days. So yesterday we completed building five in interior or exterior window frames, got them installed, lag bolted, and then popped the window in. And today we're insulating, spray foaming, building the frames for the exterior doors. And we should hopefully have them all done today. If you'd like to get a job working on a construction site like this, understand that it's not easy it's still a construction job you're gonna get dirty there's gonna be long days with a lot of grit but you can be a part of the future by going to humanrobotarmy.com and submitting your resume for a chance to work with a company like nidus 3d doing construction innovation 